Alright guys, with WNBA player Brittany Griner being sentenced to nine years in Russian prison, breaking big rocks into little rocks, her stance on the national anthem has come into spotlight as well as the other prisoners that we're leaving behind in Russia, some of whom committed the same crimes as Brittany Griner. However, they're not getting nearly as much attention, okay? And I want to talk about that today because it really does show uh, who in this society actually has privilege and who does not have privilege, okay? Despite what the woke revolutionaries tell us, the people that have the most privilege in our society are people who are white. It seems like this Brittany Griner situation uh, is actually saying and telling us the exact opposite. And I want to talk about some of the stories of some Americans that are locked up in a Russian prison that you guys may not have heard about that are not getting nearly as much attention as Brittany Griner, despite, again, being locked up for some of the same things and being in situations that seem to be very, very, very unfair. So with that being said, first I wanna focus on um, Brittany Griner getting trashed for her stance on the national anthem. In a 2020 interview, she said, quote, I honestly feel we should not play the national anthem during our season. Griner said, I think we should take that much of a stand i don't mean that in any disrespect to our country my dad was in vietnam and a law officer for 30 years i wanted to be a cop before basketball i do have pride in my country so here's the thing man um me personally when i hear the national anthem i always stand up in fact i don't cry much but but when i hear the national anthem that makes me cry almost every single time okay i tear up every single time i hear it thinking about what our country has been through and what that national anthem stands for and no as a black person i'm not woke right and think that oh my god the national anthem had a line about slaves no that's not the way i think about it okay i think about what this country has been through right and uh, the people that have fought and died for this country to get us to a place we're at today where as a black person um, I have more privilege than almost any other person of color, a so-called person of color on earth, right? That is what America has given me. And I am forever, eternally grateful and thankful for that, okay? Um, so I just feel like me personally, um, if you feel like we shouldn't even play the national anthem, um, you can't come back around after that and try to soften up the comments by saying, well, I don't mean no disrespect. I got pride for my country, but I just don't want to play the national anthem. Like, that don't make sense to me, right? You can't have your cake and eat it too here. Griner's comments came amid protests throughout the country in the wake of Breonna Taylor of the Breonna Taylor incident and the Black Lives Matter movement. Quote, I'm going to protest regardless, she told the Republic's Jeff Metcalf in that interview on July 27, 2020. Quote, I'm not going to be out there for the national anthem. If the league continues to play it, that's fine. It will be all season long. I'll not be out there. I, fe I feel like more are going to probably do the same. I can only speak for myself. At the Olympics, I understand you're playing for your country at that point. She continued, I'm glad I'm able to look to my left and my right at my sisters and see we're all together fighting. Griner said of the WNBA's season-long commitment to social justice issues. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm pretty sure uh, Griner right now, because she's locked up in a Russian prison, is uh, really wishing she could look to her left and her right and see Americans, right? I guarantee she's wishing that she can hear the national anthem right now, even though she didn't want to hear it before in the past. Griner's comments about the national anthem at the time did not go over well with some at the time, and critics of those comments did not forget them after the WNBA star was sentenced last week. Several people, including some conservative commentators, mocked the Mercury Star's anthem stance after a judge sentenced her to nine years in prison. Tommy Lawrence says, on the bright side, B. Griner won't have to endure our national anthem for nine years. <laughs> what a win for her. Opus Magnuson says, so happy Brittany Griner moved to a place where she doesn't have to worry about hearing that nasty American anthem anymore. Thomas Hearn says, do you think Brittany Griner still hates the national anthem? Tim Young says, I wonder if Brittany Griner stands or takes a knee for the Russian national anthem every morning in her jail cell. That would be hilarious. That would be hilarious if Russia just trolled her 
by playing the Russian national anthem every time she gets up in the morning, right? She wakes up to the Russian national anthem. Grano was sentenced to nine years and a 16K fine. It would be easier to be symptomatic if she hadn't disrespected our national anthem so fragrantly. Brittany Griner said she didn't like hearing our national anthem. Brittany Griner getting nine years in prison is the perfect reminder to all Americans why it's important not to take for granted what we have in this country. I'm pretty sure her opinion of our anthem and flag has changed. On the bright side, she has not had to hear the national anthem for 170 days. <laughs> Brittany Griner requested the national anthem not be played at sporting events. I find it odd that she now asks Americans to pay for her release from Russian custody. Facts. Facts. Again, um, Brittany Griner, we are currently allegedly in negotiations for her, right? The negotiation talks have started, which to me indicates that she probably won't be locked up all that much longer. However, um, I think that should be outrage over this. And the reason why I think that should be outrage over the fact that Brittany Griner is getting out of prison, or put it this way, the United States is trying to get her out of prison, and they have labeled her as wrongfully detained, is because there are people, Americans, who are not famous and rich like Brittany Griner who are locked up in Russian prison for some of the same things as Brittany Griner is. However, they're not getting any attention at all and the United States had not declared them wrongfully detained. Mark Fogel is growing. The teacher from Oakmont was sentenced to 14 years in a Russian prison. Pennsylvania lawmakers are doing everything they can to help. They're pushing the State Department to include Fogel in any negotiations to bring home American prisoners in Russia. Jessica Gway sat down with his niece who shared her thoughts. I'm sure he'll be proud and, and grateful. Um, I mean, I hope he knows that, like, of course, we would do this for him. You know, family is the most important bond that there is. Mark Fogel's niece, Ellen Keelan, and his entire family are trying to stay strong as they push for Fogel to be freed from Russian detainment. Now they have support from members of Congress representing Pennsylvania who sent a letter to U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. I put the letter together. We had not only bipartisan, but bicameral support uh, from the Pennsylvania delegation. And hopefully that shows that Pennsylvania, both Senate and House, stands united to get Fogel back. Representative Guy Reschenthaler and 10 other lawmakers are asking the State Department to immediately classify the Oakmont resident and teacher as wrongfully detained and to include him in any potential exchange that might include WNBA player Brittany Kreiner and former Marine Paul Whelan. I'm glad that someone's in our corner, especially for Mark. We care about him deeply. We love him. This was an unfair, an unjust sentence, unjust punishment for the crime. We feel that way about the verdict on the Griner case as well. Um, you know, we just, we want them all home. They deserve to come home. Fogel was detained at a Moscow airport in August of last year for having 17 grams of medical marijuana, which he used to treat chronic back pain. In June, he was sentenced to 14 years of hard labor in a Russian prison. The White House shared a statement saying, in part, we take seriously our responsibility to assist U.S. citizens abroad and are monitoring the situation. We continue to insist that Russia allow consistent, timely consular access to all U.S. citizens. The Secretary of State reviews cases of U.S. nationals detained abroad by state actors to determine if they are wrongful. Keelan hopes all the efforts to get Fogel home are working. The Biden administration is, you know, obviously fully aware. Um, it's more just to continue applying pressure and sort of show our support in that way that there's a lot of people that care about Mark and want him home. We will push this and make sure that they're taking notice of Mr. Fogel's case. Jessica Gway, KDKA News. Yeah, so Mark Fogel. American school teacher, positive contributor to society. Not necessarily sure if I can say as much <laughs> about Brittany Griner, um, but he got locked up on the same allegations that Brittany Griner had, and we haven't heard anything about him. The U.S. hasn't even declared him wrongfully detained. They're not going to try to work to get him out. Well, why is that? Why not? Right? Same exact charges. Same exact charges. Okay? But Brittany Griner is wrongfully detained. And it's not just him, right, that's being locked up. You also have women like Sarah Kravinick, 
When Russian human rights activist Yekaterina Kalugina arrived at a Moscow area detention center on April 4th to speak with imprisoned WNBA star Brittany Griner, she wasn't expecting to cross paths with the only other American woman currently incarcerated in Russia. The activist tells People that unlike Greiner, who was calm during their visit, American school teacher Sarah Kravonik was incredibly distraught. Kulugina recalls how Kravonik hugged her and burst into tears during their encounter. She also asked, quote, How have I ended up in here? It's all untrue. I'm a good person. The activist learned that Kravonik, who was living in a pink painted cell with six other women, was arrested in November of 2021 after a domestic dispute involving her Russian romantic partner. Kravonik told her that she had defended herself by grabbing a kitchen knife, then lashed out at her partner and caught him on the nose. After her boyfriend called police, she was arrested. According to Russian media reports, Kravonik was charged with intention to inflict slight bodily harm and threatening to kill or do grievous bodily harm. Those reports also noted that she expressed regret and told authorities that she did not intend to kill her boyfriend. The two have since reconciled, with her boyfriend eventually withdrawing the charge. Kravonik was then released on bail on the condition that she would not leave Moscow and would demonstrate good behavior. While she awaited trial, her boyfriend says Kravonik sought advice from the U.S. Embassy and was told she should leave Russia as soon as possible. On December 15th, Kravonik was escorted to Moscow's airport by an American diplomat, who'd also reportedly sent an email to her with electronic tickets and details of the trip attached. But when Kravonik arrived at customs, Russian authorities confiscated her passport. She was later arrested and charged with violating the terms of her bail. A State Department official confirmed the arrest of a U.S. citizen in Moscow in December of 2021. According to Kalugina, Krivonik is a Christian woman who loved Russian culture and Russian children. She told Kalugina that she was born in California and arrived in Moscow in 2017 after divorcing her American military husband. Krivonik has two adult sons and a daughter who live in the United States. After six months of imprisonment, Kalugina tells people that Krivonik's appeal failed and she's been shipped off to a penal colony shipped off to a penal colony after her boyfriend dropped the allegations of domestic abuse right the russians said you know what we don't care we're still gonna lock you up right you're still going to do some labor and some time now allegedly she might be pregnant okay um which complicates the situation even more it makes it even more sad however you've never heard of these stories despite the fact that these people are supposed to have white privilege right <laughs> specifically mr fogel he's supposed to have white male privilege and for whatever reason that white male privilege has not helped him in russia or helped him in the u.s but Brittany griner who is a black lesbian right an nba uh a WNBA player for whatever reason is getting the special privilege of not only having media attention but having the biden administration actively in talks to trade her for a Russian arms dealer, right? Potentially putting American lives in danger to get Brittany Griner out of jail for a crime that she admitted guilt to. People like her and her supporters will say that, well, no, they don't have privilege. They're oppressed. They're victims in our society. They always get the ish end of the stick. When in situations like this, it seems to me, being a black woman who likes to sleep with other women, uh, it seems to be an advantage, right? That seems to be coming in handy and part of the reason why you're getting special treatment that these other people aren't getting. It's either that or you have rich privilege. You have elitist privilege. Somebody that's a part of the upper class, the privileged class in our society, the only real privileged class in our society are the elite, to be quite honest with you. You're a part of that, so therefore, you know, you get people you know, vouching for you and protesting for you to come out, right? We're exchanging Russian arm dealers for you. But other people, people that actually fought for this country, regular, normal, everyday citizens, they don't get the same benefit of the doubt. Which goes to show you guys exactly who has the privilege in our society and who doesn't. It seems that if you are a part of the elite class or if you're a part of the oppressed class, you have all the real privilege. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.